about this web and we're going to carry on painting our uh, surgeons from Dead Zone, the corporate or the corporation surgeons rather. Now in the last video I used a grey, I forgot to tell you what it was called. It's called Administratum Grey. Um, that's the one I used for all of this area. And as you can see it's all had one coat. Also I had uh, I've got a nice even coat now and we're ready for the next stage um, even his face has had the coats as well so he's all sorted and ready ready for action so what is the next stage well first of all we have to do washes before we can do anything else to so this this brings out the shadows so the washes I'm going to be using, the first of first one is Reichland Flesh Shade. And this is going to be surprisingly enough for his flesh. So we just get some on the brush and brush it on. It looks a little harsh as it stands, but You'll see when it's dried how it's going to look. Okay, so that's the flesh done. And now we're going to do Draken, the, uh, the rest of him. And this is going to be using Drakenhof Nightshade. This is a bluey grey colour. And as you can see, I've got two blobs of sticky tack here. What are they for? Well, they are for his arms. So first of all I'm going to go over all of the um, except for the blade. So all the black, all the grey is going to get covered in this particular colour. And the trick is to keep going with it, keep it moving, don't allow it to um, form a solid line anywhere because you do that you're not going to be able to get it, um, get rid of it and disguise it. So um, keep it working, I'll keep working it and make sure as I say, the, it doesn't form a solid line where it's pulled somewhere, like here for instance, if I left that now, that would um, that would basically stain it and you wouldn't be able to get anything more out of it or you wouldn't be able to disguise it so that's that bit done, what I'm going to do now is using a certain amount of dexterity I'm going to place it, send it up in the blue tack or the sticky tack. I won't do the same with this arm which is holding the gun. As you can see I can get the lines there. The, um, it goes into the crevices and into the recesses. And gives you the shadow details which is what we we need and you'll see why when we get round to highlighting we can actually work from this to highlight better there we go so that's that model done or that part of the model done and now it's the rest of him <laughs> This is going to be the fun part. And now you'll see where everything sort of like where all the details are as well. You know what they say, the devil's in the details. So let's bring them out. So what to 
make sure that all the recesses are covered. Oops, I'm going to just go a little bit here because it started drying and I tried moving some of the paint and it's caused a little bit of discoloration but you just wet it again go over with uh, the same colour and it will be fine so this is to bring out the shadows we are going to be painting over the top of this anyway so you won't notice There we are. So that is our surgeant base coated and washed. As I said, what we have to do now is just leave it until um, the wash is dry and then we can carry on. So uh, I will be back in a couple of seconds to start highlighting. Okay, welcome back. It's dried now, as you can see, and you've got that blue tint to all the grey that we've put on. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is taking some more of that grey. We're going to be mixing it in. In fact, yes, we are we're going to be mixing a little bit of the black in with grey. You know, we want a lot of grey in the black because we want a fairly darkish grey colour. Like so. And that is going to be areas of the black. I've just realised, no it isn't, I've gone off on a tank, <laughs> I've gone off doing exactly what I wasn't going to do. Because <laughs> those areas are going to be blue, while the, the blue areas that we have here now is going to be like a greyish, whitish colour. So, I'm sorry I've uh, got myself all confusticated again. <laughs> okay, so ignore that first step. <sighs> Let's get on with, <laughs> oh dear, let's get on with um, doing what I planned. Okay, so first of all, using Calador Sky. Okay, we're going to have some of that on our palette. We can actually mix some of that in with the grey, see how that looks. Um, if it makes an interesting colour. We might use that. No, it really doesn't do anything special, but it was worth a try. So, we're not going to be using that. What we are going to be using, however, is our fine detail brush, a spot of water, and our Calador Sky. Sometimes the only time we get to actually uh, work out what colours are like is by mixing them in, looking to see what the colours are like. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you never know until you try. It's quite often I've made, been mixing colours and uh, they turned out really what I you know, turned out some colour I really did like. I've applied it and then realised that I already had a colour already mixed, which was exactly the same shade, near enough. So, uh, 
It's like the old adage says, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but the thing is, if you can mix your own colours, you're better off doing that. So we're applying the blue to all these black areas. But as you can see, we're not using it covering all the black. We're leaving some of the black showing. Um, now the areas where I'm leaving the black showing is where it would be um, shadowed. So I've got it under that piece there and just under that line there, leaving a little bit of black, I think, just showing on the top edges. Now here there's going to be just a little bit on show, not much. But that basically is that. Um, also here we're going to have a little bit of blue on show at the top and not so much at the bottom. But we are going to do everywhere. In fact, no we're not, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to do what I was going to, thinking of doing, should I say. Okay, I was thinking of uh, applying it, applying the blue to all the black and then going back again with another wash. I'm not going to do that. Now what I'm going to do instead is just try and pick and choose where I'm putting this blue. The nice is if the model would stay attached. to its base, then I can hold it and paint without it falling off. Right. A little more water. You usually find you need a little water if the paint stops coming off the brush easily. Just that little bit of water gets it a little more fluid and allows it to come off the brush. There we go. So, as I say, there's the going around all the areas that I want black to be black. And also We're going to go around the, the sharp edge there. This is called edge highlighting, just running a line along an edge. There we are. And then at the top there, we can just run with that. Now I know that looks a lot of blue with this, but there's not going to be a lot of blue by the time we've finished on show anyway. And here we have another bit of black and another area where you can have some edge highlighting. Here as well. But we're not running with edge highlighting all over the place because I don't really like that uh, look. I'm just going to have a little bit of blow in certain areas. So again. These areas are where the light is hitting. And that will do for that part of the back. Oops, I'd have realised I'd gone off camera there. Sorry about that. 
So that's what we've done. I'm just going to rinse the brush a little bit, dry it off, and add a spot more water. Have I zoomed in? I have, I do apologise for that. I didn't realise I was so close, that's why I kept going off camera. So, it's difficult to keep an eye on what you're filming and what you're painting. So unfortunately, occasionally I may go off camera and I do apologise if I do. Um, we can actually go here as well. And a little bit there. And put this on that edge. Yeah. yeah. And now open the uh, and the pick out different areas where you think the light is gonna hit. It just breaks up the black. If nothing else, it gives you some, gives your eye something to focus on, rather than just being a black, flat shape. And now there. And yeah, I'm not going to do those areas which look as though they're concertinaed. That's going to be something completely different what we're doing and these are going to be different as well. As are the um, the pouches and everything else. So that you can see is that for these. Um, anything on here that needs doing? Yes, a little bit. Just on the top of the um, here, like so, and the hand, there we are. And we'll just touch a few different areas as well. We're going to see going on to this blue, but as time goes on, it will be highlighted a bit, a little more, so that you don't actually see the. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't actually see some of it as strong as it looks when it's just one all one coat. So. Once we've added a few more layers of this, those areas are going to be brighter and therefore you will see them a lot more clearer than the ones that have only received one coat. I hope that seems logical to you. Is that now? In regards to the um, the rest of the body armor, well, we are going to have still looking blue. In fact, what I think we should do first is his face. Let's get that sorted. So we want the Kisler flesh again, and we're adding that to the raised areas where his face is, where his skin is not going to be hidden by shadow. There we go. 
This, is, this one is a little bit tricky because we have the, the visor over the top. Again, which prevents me really putting much the what, as you can see from his face. A little better now. So, that's that. Now, we think we could use some of this colour that we mixed earlier for the armour. Let's see how it looks, shall we? We can just do a little test here and there. We don't have to use it if we don't feel it's right. Interesting. Let's go with it, shall we, for, for a while. So it's now we are going to be I say, adding a few layers of this onto. Um, Mini, so uh, I'm just trying to get to a stage where I can actually paint this, where I can hold it, have it on camera, and it not fall off the <laughs> the, the paint tub. Usually, the way I would do this is. I would have the figure on a base which would prevent it from falling over because I'd have much more of a surface area to work with but unfortunately this doesn't come on a base as yet however and so this is for a for the win now oh, this is the prize in a little giveaway and I promise you, I'm showing you how to paint this, but when you get it, you'll find that it comes on a base that I'm going to do off camera and that you won't see. So it'll be a nice little surprise for you. You see how the model gets painted, the base you will not see how it's done. <laughs>
a little bit of change now because we've been doing blues quite a bit in this video. We're going to go on to metallic colours. Um, <clears throat> now the metallic colours that I like to do start off with a very dark brownish metallic colour which is Warplock Bronze. Now we use this straight out of the pot because it's a very watery paint anyway um, so I'm not incredibly uh, fussed about it being watered down um, so what I'm going to be doing is on the on this particular arm it's going to be a case of painting in the basic handle and blade of this sword, knife, bayonet, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be easy, shall we call it a blade? <laughs> and then I'm going to paint that in the copper as well. Now we're going to have two separate colours on here, it's not going to be all silver. Um, I'm also going to do uh, what I need to do first of all is just get a little bit of this sticky tack and go over the edges to make sure that there's none of it still clinging on. And with this bit I'm just going to roughly In fact, I better not use this brush for that. <laughs> I can, you can ruin brushes doing this technique. Right. It's not the case if you can ruin brushes doing this technique. You do ruin brushes this technique. So we have special brushes that we use when we're doing this dry brush technique. They have a very sharp bristle, very flat tip, and they're called dry brushes. And you just get a small amount of brush on the paint, a small amount of paint on the brush, sorry, and just roughly go over it. Now I'm not trying to cover all the black with this, just uh, get a little bit of darker colour on here. And I'm certainly not getting got a lot of brush covered with my paint. Um, just a case, as I say, of tinting that black another colour. And when that's done, I can come back to it later. But next up, I just thought our papers dried up. That's why I was having trouble trying to. It is quite warm in here, I'm afraid, and... Oh well, never mind. So, I think... I'm going to have to leave it there for this. Um, when we come back, we will carry on with a bit more highlights. Do the blade and the guns. And hopefully, in the next video, we shall be... If not completely finished, then almost finished. I'm going to leave that to last. This is the cape. Um, I want to try and do something nice on that cape. Okay, so uh, that's it for the time being. I'm going to figure out a way of securing this uh, model so I can paint it properly. I'm just doing my uh, thing on the, uh, on the paint pot. So fingers crossed I can sort that out the next time. So as I said, I'm gonna leave it there. So